Greetings and welcome to another Eigenverse tutorial. I hope you're ready for some low poly adventures in Houdini, where we will be learning the basics of content creation in a really cool way. Now, in ancient times, the master craftsmen would create pottery, very smooth, interestingly shaped pottery, and then the mathematician would look at that pottery and discover interesting properties about its surface, which eventually became the study of topology. Now today, the master craftsman, meaning me, is going to create a very awesome video game piece of pottery. And then we're going to look at it and discuss the way in which the pieces of this pottery are connected, which is what the modern master craftsman refers to when they say the word topology. So to get started, right click here, type geo, and drop down a geo node. Double click on that, hit that, delete it, and now we are ready to start. A few keyboard shortcuts you might want to know when working in here to create things. If you hold over this area, hold spacebar and one, and that'll give you your normal view. Hold spacebar and two, and you'll see from the top, spacebar three, spacebar four. Uh, we just want one where the Y axis is pointing upward, because Y is up. And we're going to make something that it goes upwards in the up direction. Get some space because I don't know how to scroll this when we actually start working and dropping down a curve, which is what we're going to do. So right click here and type curve. Uh, now click there. Obviously to start drawing the curve, you click this multicolored gimbal icon. And next you want to magnet it to this uh, Japanese letter ta and there. Now we are in position to start drawing polygons. Incidentally, what this actually does is Snap it so that every time you click, you land exactly on one of these grid points. Um, and you can change the grid points in your display settings, hitting D. But we're not going to do that now. So hover over zero, zero here and drop one down here because this is going to be one point on our curve. And what we're going to draw is the contour of our pot. Except let's make it more interesting than a pot. Let's draw a sort of goblet, polygonal goblet that our low polygon hero can drink out of. Just drop it down, put a node everywhere where you think there should be a detail. I'm going to create a little bump here. Uh, about five units there, yeah. And then something like feeling that. And then a bit of a lip on the top. And uh, you can hit escape to get out of that. And there we go. There is our awesome goblet or it soon will be. Hold spacebar one to get back into the view and hold spacebar G so you can see it. Uh, the other thing I like to do is hold, click and hold over this camera and say, keep pivot on tumble and rotate. It's a little hard to explain what that does, but it basically makes it easier for you to look at your whole object. So this doesn't look exactly drinkable right now. So it turns out all you need to do is one node here, drag down here, you can hit tab and say, revolve and uh, hit the little blue thing on there and then bam now you have a cup what it's really done is it's replicated that original curve in this case 10 times which you can see by going onto the revolve node going to detail and see divisions 10. now nobody likes the number 10 because it doesn't have enough divisors and it's not a very computer number i like the number 16. let's go with 16 for now um or let's go crazy and say something like 64. Now we have something that looks like you would actually find in your house. And then you can drag down here and type tab and say subdivide, maybe twice. Uh, this is becoming um, a little too high poly, but uh, yeah, now we have a nice cup. Except we didn't want high poly at all. We wanted low poly, so let's get rid of that. To make it low poly, what I actually like is the six divisions. This makes each polygon very obvious. You might notice a problem here uh, that can cause significant problems down the line, so let's address it now. Uh, when you look at this revolve, what it really did is it multiplied this edge here, double click on this edge to get this whole edge, and it multiplied it around many times. However, it also multiplied this edge right here many times, which means it also multiplied this point many times. So if I select this point here, uh, so the point, and hit T for translate, and move it around, you'll see we're not really moving around that point. Or we are, but we're only moving one copy of it. Uh, that's no good. So in order to get all these points, to consolidate all these overlapping points, 
Let's get rid of this edit mode here. We don't need that. And then uh, tab and fuse. And now you'll see we've turned that point into one point, which will significantly fix our topology and help us later on down the line. Now we have a surface, which means now we can start talking about the topology. First of all, let's notice something here. You see this weird shading artifact going on over on the left side here that doesn't look like anything should look. Uh, why is that? So this has to do with something called the normal. And uh, if you click the normal here, uh, where is it? Right there is display primitive normals. Well, first of all, there's a number of problems here. The main problem now being the, nor the normals are going inside. The point of a normal is to jut outside of a surface. So you might say, oh, well, these surfaces have both a front and a back. Uh, well, that's uh, one of the first things you need to learn about topology. Technically, a surface only has one side, which is the outside. If you have both an outside and an inside, then that's two surfaces together pointing in opposite directions. Now, this leads into extraordinary problems when you're trying to, say, import this into another program. And it's also rendering every surface twice to get that outside. So this is not performant. Um, and this will slow down your computer if you had billions of faces and you're rendering this in real time. What I like to do here is hit D to get those um, details up again. Go to Optimize and say Remove Back Faces. Uh, now we exit out of that, and lo and behold, it, the whole thing is obviously inside out. Now why is that? Oh right, uh, this has to do with a certain mathematical thing called a pseudo vector. When you revolve this and you turn a curve into a surface, which way is the surface pointing? It's obviously pointing perpendicular to the surface, but there are two perpendiculars. There's inside and there's outside. Uh, the way it determines is just by the order in which the vertices appear in the data, and in particular in the, uh, the vertices within the primitives. So the way to fix this, there's a number of ways. You could type down, go down here and put a reverse SOP. That will pop everything back out. I like to fix the problem at its source though and go up here to the revolve. And um, we are revolving around the positive y-axis. If we revolved counterclockwise, or I'm actually not sure if it's going clockwise or counterclockwise, but if, if we go in the opposite direction, then this is gonna work. And you can make it go in the opposite direction by flipping the axis. And there we go. Now this uh, is facing outside. It's removing the back faces because there is no surface facing us here because that surface is facing in the other direction. So now let's talk about this weird artifact here. What it's doing is the normals that are being displayed are not actually the primitive normals, but the vertex normals. Let's take this primitive right here. Let's highlight this face so we can see it. This face has four vertices. Um, you see one here, one here, one here, and one here. This is because of the little known fact that a square has four corners. Uh, so does the one next to it though. So here's another very important distinction whenever you're working with topology or Houdini or any, anything related to whatever we talk about on this website. In this section here, there are six points visible. These four and then these other two that extend off of them. But there are in fact eight vertices in that section. This is because each face has four vertices. The vertices are lined up over the points. They're drawn a little offset here to make it easy to see, but in fact, these vertices lie exactly on that point. But one point can have multiple vertices. One point will have, in fact, a vertex for every face that is attached to it. Now, the normals do their best to blend smoothly across the face. So these vertices on this side of this face are facing more towards whatever direction this face is facing, if that makes any sense. This face is facing behind and out to the left. So these vertices will be entirely to the left, whereas these vertices will be facing directly at you. Then the way that the computer will display this to you in what is called the shader, which is how a computer displays information to you, will smoothly blend from facing that way to directly at you. That's why you see a gradient here. We don't want that. So how do you fix that? Well, drop down here, you hit tab and you type normal. 
you can now choose this cusp angle, which will tell it to not smooth those faces. So for instance, whenever you have an angle that's shorter than 60 degrees, which uh, I think these ones down here are, it's going to say, okay, this is a, this is a corner. Uh, there's no point in making it smooth. So don't you do your smooth interpolation thing. Just change the angle harshly. But we want, we're going for an N64 look on this thing. So in the N64 days, everything was harsh and sharp and pointy and painful. So let's just drop the cusp angle to zero. And now everything is sharp and pointy and painful, just the way we like it. When this is usually the only way in which low poly stuff looks good. Why do they smooth it by default? Well, normally, you're not, not everybody is making sharp, pointy, painful N64 graphics, but we are, so that's what we're doing. Incidentally, there's another way to get this effect that uh, we often use, which is by beveling. So let's get into what a bevel is. What a bevel is, is it splits every edge into a series of thin faces. So right here, we have this bevel offsetting a distance of zero. Let's instead offset a distance of Point one. And now let's change this to round, and let's say eight divisions, because eight is another very computerish number. Now what has this done? It has created a round sort of circular arc between this face and this face by creating a bunch of tiny little faces. Now the vertices, even if we don't sharpen them, will be interpolating the direction of this face between this face and this face. But since these two faces are pointing in more or less the same direction, as opposed to, say, these two faces, so this face will look a lot flatter and a lot sharper, and uh, this will also create the, the look we're going for. Of course, this doesn't look like an N64, because if an N64 tried to render this many vertices at the same time, it would melt and burn down your house. But in doing so, uh, what else have we done to the topology? So first of all, let's talk about what topology really is. It's not just points and normals. Topology is the study of how things are connected. We have these points. So you can see we have a couple of points here. And these points are connected. Uh, they're connected by they're this edge. This edge connects these two points. That is topology. This face connects these four points. These four points belong to a set, uh, which is the vertices included by this face. That is what we're talking about when we're talking about topology. So every time you add a face, every time you add a vertex, you change the topology. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important for a number of reasons because it determines how you can modify your object in general and how uh, computers can recognize the surface that you're dealing with. So to see an example of this in action, click on the polygon tab up here and hit edge loop. Now what the edge loop tool does is it draws a ring around the object. It does this by going from one edge to the opposite edge. Now, first let's go to the very simpler topology up here where we, before the, uh, let's shake that away and go up here to the fuse. Um, so if we, Click the edge loop tool now. You'll see that we can go anywhere around the cup uh, and it'll go exactly where we would expect it to go. So for instance, if we wanted to swell out a little bit more here, we could add an edge loop here and then we could type the E for scale. Um, don't ask me why that is and scale it up here. And now you see it swells out up here. So that's how the edge loop tool works and how it's connected to topology. It takes one edge, it goes to the opposite edge. But now let's go down to the bevel and then select the edge loop tool. If you'll see, it goes fine around the handle, but when we get up into this area, it doesn't go all the way around. It only goes around these edges. Now, why is that? Well, that's because we've significantly changed the topology of how these faces work. Right here, let's say we click on this line, it'll go to the opposite line and it knows how to find it because this is essentially a square. It knows that this edge is opposite of this edge, and it will continue doing that all the way around. But what edge is opposite of this edge? Well, you might say, oh, obviously it's this edge. Or is it this edge? Or is it this edge, or this edge, or this edge? 
if you see up here, there are too many faces on this polygon. So we can't make an edge. Now, why did, why did this happen? Uh, why would Houdini do this to us? Well, if we go to the bevel here, we see we allowed vertex splits. This creates a much smoother shape by not only splitting the edges into multiple polygons, but also by splitting the vertices into multiple edges. So you see originally we had this one vertex, and now it's been split into a series of edges. This makes the whole thing much smoother, however it messes up your topology. If you uncheck this, bam, all your topology goes back to normal. This will allow you to now take an edge loop and go around the cut. And you can do all your edits as before. Aha. But I want to show you a few more ways in which you can use the uh, bevel tool to achieve a uh, special effect in these low poly projects. So I'm just going to delete all of these things called poly split, which are created every time you do the edge loop. I'm also going to delete this bevel and start over. So let's talk a little bit more about the bevel mode and the different ways you can use it when creating a low poly thing. So as we saw earlier, we can just simply round it and set the divisions rather high and uh, set a small distance of say 0.1 and that creates a nice smooth corner. Do not allow vertex splits to preserve the topology. But this isn't really low poly anymore. In fact, you can even use this uh, increase the distance significantly and end up basically rounding or subdividing your entire mesh into something quite smooth. So what if we wanted something that has a bit more detail and is a bit more eye-catching, but uh, doesn't quite look this smooth. Let's just delete the poly bevel, create a new one, view it, and let's instead use chamfer. And we'll say only one division. Uh, now what a chamfer does is it makes a clean cut across the corner. It simply lops off the corner. If you allow vertex splits, it'll also lop off the corners, if we want to preserve our topology, not allow vertex splits. And this is what I did on a lot of the smaller objects in the project I'm working on. You can then say normal and set the cusp angle to zero and view that. And you get something that still looks very video game-ish, but it still has faces on the edges to reflect the light when you're looking directly at it, which makes it look a lot more real and gives it a lot more presence in the world. Now, another note about the chamfer is that chamfer works by lopping off the edge, which means it doesn't really matter how many times, how many divisions you have. They'll all still lie on the same plane. This becomes especially obvious when we add in the normal. This is a great way to add a bunch of detail to your topology of the bevel, but it doesn't actually change its visual appearance in any in fact, I like this look so much that sometimes what I do is increase the poly bevel uh, size to say 0.2, and then I poly bevel it again. Uh, don't allow vertex splits, and now I say smooth or round, and say four divisions, and say a distance of 0.05. And now what we have is we have those flat faces. Let's get rid of these displayed normals. We have those flat faces from our chamfer but then we rounded them out. Click up here and go smooth shaded. Yes, and this is how it would look in your movie or video game. That is to say, it would look horrible. And whenever this happens, you usually are best off dropping down a fuse. Now let's say you really like this and for some reason you don't think it has too many polys to run in your video game engine. Let's wrap this up. So first of all, let's uh, remove the back faces again. And we see, okay, so obviously this would not really look very good in the game engine. So uh, we could either render it with two sides or what's much better and more realistic. And we'll make the whole thing look better is if we add a poly extrude. Let's start a little small here, let's say 0.2. As you see, that still didn't exactly fix everything because we extruded it outward, but we deleted the original. You go down here and say output back, and there you go. Now we have our full shape. And believe it or not, this has perfect topology. Everything is still only quads, except, of course, for this bottom point. Um, when we'll need to fix this, too. If 
you remember, when earlier when we fu- uh, we had to fuse that point, uh, because this was the point that got revolved around, and there are six edges attached to it, and this is unusual topology. Uh, so when we bevel that, it will create a six-sided face. This is very bad for very many reasons. First of all, you obviously can't edge loop it or anything, but also your computer will get very confused sometimes as to how to render it. There's too many triangles required uh, to make up this hexagon. By, before you export any project that looks like this, you want to add a divide node, and this will turn everything into triangles. And uh, this might make you sad because now all of your topology is weird and confusing. However, believe it or not, this is how it was already re- represented uh, in Houdini. Let me explain why that is. You might think, let's go up to the simpler topology to prove this point. You might think that a square is the best number that you can possibly have in a two-dimensional surface, like the outside of this cup. It has two directions you can go. It has up and down, and it has left and right. And indeed, this uh, makes it two sides for two dimensions. Uh, Makes the most sense when you're talking about the motion. However, in terms of how it's described, Two is not the best. You you might have learned in school that three points determine a plane. Well, four points determine something else. Uh, Let me show you what exactly that means. This square has to actually be represented in your computer as two triangles. Why? Well, let's twist it into a bit of a weird position here by translating it uh, by hitting T. And um, let's move it in there like that. So you might think, Oh, it's just a square still. Well, not really. You see that it, if you draw a line here and then draw lines outward, it creates a sort of butterfly shape. Uh, we can make this even more extreme. Let's move this one, let's say that way. Uh, we've severely twisted this shape. You can see what Houdini is actually doing is it's creating a triangle here and it's creating a triangle over here so that there's actually a face, uh, uh, an extra edge being created in between these two points. Um, You can see the same is happening up around all the other faces that have been distorted. This face is being pushed in. So really, computers can only deal with triangles. And if you move this into something like Unreal, it's not going to turn all of your triangles into squares for you. Um, Because real-time engines don't have time for that. So first of all, let's delete all those horrible edits we made, and then we'll go down here when we divided it. Now, you might also notice one other problem here. There is a hole going through the stem. This makes this, well, it would make it very difficult to wash. Let's only run this poly extrude over what we determine to be the part that gets extruded. Let's say that is all the points above this part here. Let's go into spacebar 3, so we have a better view of it, and select all of the primitives above here. Tab, group, let's call it the cup head. And now we'll go to poly extrude, and we'll just say to only extrude the cup head. Spacebar 1 to get back into review. Now you can see we're not bothering extruding anything in the stem. This will also get rid of problems when you have really narrow areas where the extrusions begin to overlap. You'll see in this case we're extruding in the wrong direction. So let's actually say it will extrude a distance of negative 0.2. And things are becoming not so procedural, but so it goes. Let's select this ring of faces here and get rid of them because this is not going to be in our cup. To select this ring of faces, we use the very intuitive command, hold A, middle mouse, and drag to the left. And there you go. Um, Now we're going to blast those. Just hit, uh, put your mouse over here and hit spacebar blast. And now they are gone. Uh, Now we can uh, add a poly cap here. And that should automatically plug that hole. But before the poly fill, hit a, put down a reverse sop and only apply it to the cup head. And we're gonna to need to get this side group, which was created here in the poly extrude. So we'll, we'll create the 
side group, and we'll also call that the cuphead. That way it'll also get reversed. And there you have it, a very cool low poly cup that you can use in your low poly project. Having an understanding of the basic nature of these techniques, such as the poly bevel and uh, subdivisions, and how they relate to the topology of your object is very important. Uh, believe you me, keeping track of your topology can be a real hassle, but it really pays off when you understand it deeply. And the more you understand uh, topology, uh, the easier it will be to create your objects and create your assets, and the less time you'll have to keep redoing the same tutorial over and over again because everything keeps breaking. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial more than I enjoyed making it, and I hope to see you on the next Low Poly Adventures in Houdini tutorial here on eigenverse.com.